moved to the Broughton Archipelago in 1984. I actually followed a group of whales in here. It was the perfect place to study whales. It was a small human community of about 100 people. Post office, whales, salmon. I could catch a salmon any time of the year, literally. I caught salmon on Christmas Eve. Salmon farms came in, and at first I thought they were a great idea. But as the problems have mounted, they have displaced the killer whales. I've published on that. We have Atlantic salmon in our rivers. We have disease problems we have never seen before. We have toxic algae blooms. We have algae blooms that paint these water brilliant orange. They're a neon sign flashing overload. Our winter Chinook salmon that used to overwinter here are virtually gone. None of the best fishermen can catch them. Killer whales are gone. The pink salmon are crashing. We're, we're watching the chums this year because this will be the first re return from the sea lice infestations of 2001. I feel that I'm going to watch this place die. This is the uh, Birdwood Salmon Farm uh, run by Heritage Sea Farms. And um, first of all, this farm was never gazetted properly. It was, this was supposed to be a marine park, and uh, it's where all the local people go for their picnics. But they said they had an emergency in Simoon Sound and their fish were dying of algae bloom, so they put this farm here. And then uh, earlier this year, they got infected with IHN, which is also known as the sockeye virus. It's, it's very close to rabies. It's sort of the fish form of rabies. And um, instead of killing the fish off, which would seem the sensible thing to do because they don't have a cure for this virus, they left the fish in the water experienced high mortalities, but a certain percentage apparently lived, and they're now packaging these diseased fish up for public consumption. And um, they're just in the latter stages of harvesting. This site also is a place where I did, um, it was one of my test sites for the sea lice study. And uh, as with all the salmon farms that had fish in them, there was a high sea lice concentration right around this birdwood salmon farm. and. Um, the unfortunate thing is all the Night Inlet Tribune fish come by this farm, but also the Kinkum Inlet Wakeman Sound fish come down through Pemphrase running away from the glacier meltwater and they congregate in these islands as well. So this one farm sitting here is affecting at least 10 different rivers that have um, pink salmon, chum, coho, and chinook. This is the whole problem with um, net pens is that Anything that's inside the pen can flow right outside the pen. The salmon themselves, the viruses, the bacteria, the parasites. You cannot separate these farm fish from the wild fish. If you go up to that farm, those people will tell you that farm is quarantined. But there's no label on it. The wild fish certainly don't know. The whales go right by that. And so the disease is carried right into the spawning grounds and the feeding grounds and the holding grounds, the most important habitat in this area. Is there any uh, kind of quarantine area or can we, can we come right in or? or you... uh, no, actually we are under quarantine, so unless you have permission from our head office, then we can't allow anyone on site. So. How far do we have to stay away? Um, within our, about this area is good, I guess, within our anchor block, so. Okay, and if you get in closer, do you? How would we? Um, I'll have to contact the head office. No, but uh, would, would we pick up the disease on the boat? Or? Pardon? Would we pick up the disease on the boat? Or? Uh, I can't comment on that, actually. Sorry. Okay. But it's uh, some kind of virus? or? I uh, can't comment. Sorry. I can't make any comments. I'm not okay. in the position to make any comments. Sorry. Sure. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. You too. So, um, when, when you start to look at this whole thing, these farms, are disease pathogen culturing centers. And they've actually been called this in the literature. A disease gets into the farm, it may be wild, it probably is wild. So far, all the diseases that I've found in the farms have been wild origin. But in the farms, it's just the multiplication, amplification of the disease organisms to a level that is completely unnatural. Sea lice are on most of the wild salmon, but they're a number so small that they've always been considered a benign parasite. Now, these fish pass the fish farms, they pass lice to the farm fish, and over the winter, the 
conditions in the farm are perfect for the lice. The fish are going around in a circle, so the baby lice have lots to attach to. There's lights on the farm, which stimulates the lice to grow faster and reproduce faster. And the fish are kept up shallow, which the lice require to survive, because the bottom of the nets are fairly shallow. So naturally, when the wild fish go in the river to spawn, all the lice would die. But now, they go into spawn, they pass these lice, they reproduce on the farms, and so in the spring, when the baby fish come out, and they're only about this long, about five centimeters in length, and they go by these farms, they're now passing through clouds of billions of larvae. And I've seen up to 68 lice on a fish this big. There's just not any room left for another one. And the problem here is not just confined to the pink salmon. Pink salmon are keystone species. They carry the open, open nutrients uh, up into the watersheds in huge amounts. Last uh, brood year for this area, we had 1.6 million fish go into the Glendale River. Each of those fish is two, two and a half pounds. So we're talking about millions of pounds of fertilizer going into this valley, and that feeds the bears, the eagles. It also feeds next spring's salmon that are spending their year in the creek. So that's the coho, the chinook, the cutthroats, um, the steelhead. All of those fish benefit from the pink salmon. So if we lose them, It'll just be a domino effect through the terrestrial environment of the birds and the eagles into the freshwater environment of the young salmonids out into the open ocean with the seals and the whales. We realize we're at the end of ten thousands of years of evolution. We lose those pink salmon, they're keystone species, everything's going to fall in a domino effect. We know this.